reading this morning, Luke 24, uh, 44 through 53, is right after Jesus has come and was talking to the, to the um, disciples for the last time before he ascends into heaven. <coughs> then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. <coughs> that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am ascending upon you I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as, as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joys. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. Through these words, our God is still speaking. Thank you, Lord, for speaking, God. In his book, On a Wild and Many Mountain, Dean of the Chapel at Duke University, William Bowman, tells of being in New Haven, Connecticut, as a student in 1970, during the famous Black Panther trial. Perhaps some of you remember those days, not that long ago. In 1970, Turbulent time in our country. Time of strife, discord, agony that tried to tear our country apart. Most of the unrest of those days came to focus, came to a focus during the trial of the Black Panther leaders. It was just at that time that Willingham had to attend a choral mass at the Catholic Church near Yale University. A voice choir was singing a great ascension composition called. The Santa Deus, God has gone up. And he sat there listening to those young voices, but he found himself thinking, how appropriate. God has gone up, gone away, gone up. God has left us to our confusion. Abandoned in the midst of our angry shouts, the mobs, the sound of gunfire, the rhetoric of the revolutionaries. God indeed has abandoned. However, as he sat there and continued to listen, Blumen noticed that the boys were not singing absconded Deus, which means God has abandoned us, but rather they sang ascended Deus, God has gone up. And the words of that song got Blumen to understand that God has not given up on us. For the ascension of Jesus signaled that, that what Jesus had begun on earth, we brought to completion in heaven, even after his ascension to heaven. As you heard the Apostles' Creed, it says, He ascended to heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father. He said not to abandon us, but to complete what he began. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, through his church, and through his people. <coughs> and Christ is still at work to rule with love and mercy. Christ has not abandoned us, but he's ascended to heaven, and that's what the focus of our worship is today. That's what it's all about. So important is the event in Luke's, that Luke describes it twice, the last chapter of this gospel and the first chapter of Acts. The setting is at the Mount of Olives. Forty days has passed since the resurrection of Jesus. It's a time for him to return to heaven. And so once again, Jesus appears to the disciples. He joins them in worship. He breaks bread with them. He announces to them that they will soon receive the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes to them, they will be his witness in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. And even to the ends of the earth. Now he's giving them this assurance. He's lifted up before them into heaven until a cloud hit him from their side. Send it news. God has gone up. Well, ran forward. Here it is. Too.
2022, folks. Remind us, history has not taught us many lessons in the last five decades. We're still experiencing a very turbulent time in our nation today. Nothing's really changed. The unrest is maybe even more in the open than five decades ago. We have those who forget where their ancestors hailed from and the hardships they escaped from and come to the United States. Land of the free and the brave. We have a few politicians trying to run a country who want to tell us if you're not like their political belief, if you don't come to this country with a bank account a sufficient amount, we don't want you. If you're on a Statue of Liberty, a plaque that says, thanks to Emma Lazarus in 1883, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest tossed to me. I lit my lamp beside the golden door. Did you know that from 1970 to 2022, we've had 1,951 school shootings in this country? 664 preventable innocent children losing their lives and 1,791 injured. This more than weekend, the official beginning, the unofficial beginning of summer. The time kids wait the, the bated breath for summer vacation to begin. The time for fun and adventure for the next three months. Unfortunately, for many young people won't be doing that. Their parents and families are grieving, lost their babies. Whenever you get a plane back, you are. Laugh. The Carol Crohn's. This is a time we should be honoring those who gave their lives to this country to protect the rights of everyone's right to pursue life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. This is what Memorial Day is for. But these innocent young lives. There are teachers who give their lives to consider students. Must not ever be forgotten that either. God above must have had some specific reason for us this day, Memorial Day weekend, and Ascension Sunday being observed the same weekend. I remember a small plaque that used to hang in our home when we were younger that said, Don't look down, keep looking up. It's Memorial Day weekend in this nation. It's Ascension, Ascension Sunday in the church. Most Americans, it's time for fun and sun. Some of us will observe this holiday by looking back. We'll take some flowers that special place of memory. We'll relive our life. For those who are dear to us, and we'll shed a tear. Memory is God's way of keeping those with us who have gone before us. There are times we are wise to stop and look back. I suppose if you have a loved one serving somewhere in this world today, there's great concern for their safety and that of their comrades. Because we want them home soon. Whatever your opinion of the war, whatever your political persuasion may be, let's remember that over 7,000 young men and women lost their lives in Iraq and Afghanistan. And 53,000 others have been wounded, many of them seriously. Soldiers who are still there and the innocent civilians who have suffered so much for so long. May the God of grace and the Lord of compassion look out for all of his children. When looking back, when looking out, I invite you today to look up. Look all the way up to Jesus, the author of our salvation, the perfecter of our faith. When we don't know where we're going, he's the way. When wondering, wondering whom we believe, 
these are truths. We doubt that we can't make it. He is the life. Here's the mystery of the gospel. Jesus goes before us and walks beside us. He blazes a trail and orders our steps. I know that that blows our time warp minds at times, but it's the truth of the gospel. He's taken to heaven, but lo, he is, he is always with us, even to the end of the world. So look up today, not to the mountains that lie before you, not to the runners competing in a race. Look up to Jesus, who knows that you can do it, and will encourage you every step of the way. Keep looking up. Many days have elapsed as you heard, between Christ's resurrection and ascension. In fact, Luke makes it very clear. It's been 40 days that he's been with his disciples since the resurrection. Here he is back now in the upper room. Christ is not a phantom or a hallucination. He's real. The Jesus who died was in, was in truth. The Christ who rose again. See, Christianity is not found on the, on the dreams of men's disordered minds. We're in visions of fevered eyes, but a one whose actual historical fact faced and fought and conquered death and rose again. Jesus had opened the, the minds of, of those that followed him to understand scriptures. The Holy Spirit does that today in our lives when we study the Bible. Your roadmap of faith is here in that book. <clears throat> the Word of God continues to suffer in the hands of men. So people buy the Bible, the problem is they sell and read it. It looks good sitting on the end table when somebody comes in to visit. Many problems just give them to the Gideons. People read it, but misinterpret it. People challenge it to profit from it. People credit it with saints are simply not there. Besides surrounding, reading and surrounding passages or asking other people or consulting reference works. What we did, so you might pray that the Holy Spirit will open your mind to understand. Give you the needed insight to put God's word into action in your life. Just like you did the lives of the disciples. You know, it must have seemed to the disciples maybe God's plan had failed. That Jesus' mystery among them had just gone for naught. But as we see, Jesus shows them all that has happened, has actually happened to fulfill Scripture. Now, depending on which verse of the Bible you're reading from, it may say, Thus it is written, or that is written about me. To throw up to so much of the New, of our New Testament, our attention is called to some questions from the Old Testament writing, preceded by the stated pointer, it is written. His constant of prophetic literature and other parts of scripture had worthy precedent in Jesus' own ministry and teaching. In all the Gospels, Jesus reported as making a regular and precise use of Old Testament writings as he taught, as he debated, and even faced the events of his life. The present textual passage shows Jesus referring again to the known scriptures, pouring out in them those promises and criteria by which his own person ministry would be recognized and understood. When you look at the entire story that Luke has told has the most significant consequences. Jesus tells his disciples that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. And here's the good news. People are offered the opportunity to repent and to get forgiveness is available to all people. The fact that the spread of the message begins from Jerusalem is further evidence that the Christian gospel is noted and rooted in and grows out of God's saving acts on behalf of Israel. Jerusalem is a symbol of the foundation of faith of Israel. And from there, the message will extend to the whole world. And Luke, the evangelist, sets no limits on the boundaries for the gospel. 
Now, Jesus lays the responsibility to spread the message of the disciples themselves. Since they're witnesses of the things which have been fulfilled among them, it up to them to tell the good news. That's a formal task indeed. But Jesus gives them a promise that they'll receive a power. A power far beyond their own strength. I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. They're to wait in faith and patience until it's time according to God's schedule. Luke also wrote to the Greek speaking world. He wanted them to know that Christ's message of God's love and forgiveness should go to all the world. We must never ignore the worldwide scope of Christ's gospel. God wants all the world to hear the good news of salvation. It seems to the cross that all the scriptures look for. The cross was not forced on God. It was not an emergency measure when all else failed, when the scheme of things had gone wrong. It was part of God's plan. For it's the one place on earth where in a moment of time we see his eternal love. In this account today, we record the Lord's authorizing his followers, us included, to go forth in the world spreading the message of about the promise of salvation. This passage reports that Jesus not only authorized our going forth, but he also mandated that we do. And it says they went out to Bethany. It was here that he pronounced benediction upon them. The Luke recounts in one single brief sentence one of the most mysterious scenes in the story of Jesus. He withdrew from them and was carried into heaven. This sent to rouse our interest. Makes us want to want to know more. The symbolism is clear. Jesus now exalted the highest place of power and authority. He shares the glory of God. His work on earth has been completely vindicated. So the disciples stood and they watched. Jesus begins rising into the air, and soon he disappears into heaven. But seeing Jesus leave must have been kind of frightening. The disciples knew that Jesus would keep his promise to them to be with them through the Holy Spirit. The same Jesus who lived with the disciples, who died, was buried who rose from the dead, loves us, and promises to be with us always. We get known better through studying the scriptures. Pray on the Holy Spirit to make us more like Christ. We Christians, you and I, have a given word. We have a given word about the our work is sharing the news of salvation. Stating this possible result to all nations. And doing so as witnesses of these things. Verse 24, 48. We are to speak our given word from the, the vantage point of those who have experienced what we now invite others to receive. Now, message must be distinct. Our understanding must be clear. Our attitude must be accepted. In order to meet people in his spirit, as you mentioned his name. Meanwhile, we would have known that this authorized words attended or enabled and attended by the Spirit. Thus, the word of promise for Jesus that the church would have more than mere human means, human means by which to do the commanded task. Today we celebrate Memorial Day weekend and the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. Each reminds us of something very important through different symbols. 
more they cause us to look to the American flag. This stands for our unity, our freedom, the sacrifices made to make us free. <clears throat> Anthony Laconia wrote, the American flag doesn't give her glory on a peaceful, calm day. It's when the wind picks up and becomes boisterous to receive her strength. When she unfolds her hand and shows her frayed fingers. We see the stretch of red blood lines of man that fought in this land. The purity of white strips, stripes that strips our sins. The stars of Abraham's covenant, broad in the midnight sky, midnight blue sky. The rest of our forefathers established. This way high in the current of freedom. But the torch of liberty shines over the sea. This should be to unity. We strive as one nation. When it drops half mass. We think of Christ's ascension to the right hand of God the Father. Remind him he hasn't abandoned us. Even when this country seems so evil, what's happening at this time? We have those high government officers that claim to be devout Christians and do things to others and promote laws that are anything but Christian against other human beings. They deprive them of their rights to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. We're still not alone. In his book, Night, Eli Weasel wrote for the year he spent in Auschwitz. For both his parents and sister died, where he witnessed unspeakable horrors. He told a terrible evening when the whole camp was forced to witness the hangings of three prisoners. One of them was just a child whose crime was stealing the bread. Well, I said the boy would have the face of a sad angel. The three victims were being prepared for execution. The man behind we still asked, where is God? The whole camp was forced to march past the gallows where the two adults were no longer alive. But the boy was still dying. We still heard the same man behind him asking, where is God now? Then I was to say, Heard a voice in himself answer him. Where is God? God is here. Hang on, scaffolds. The incarnate God in Christ, who himself died an ignominious death on a cross, is always with us. He does not leave us alone in life or in death, in the best or in the worst. God shows up in the strangest time.